Are we doing cool? Mm -hmm. The next question is from Angela Lee on Twitter. Oh, I can't read these names. So I apologize. I'm sorry. Who says, my dog is afraid of dogs and animals, big or small. My dog is afraid of dogs and animals, big or small. Also scared of things coming her way, like plastic bottle. Hmm. My dog is afraid of dogs. All right. <clears throat> so, when a dog is afraid of something, my first way, my first thing to, uh, uh, to see or to ask is, how did the human react to that reaction? Did? So I'm, I'm not trying to find out why the dog is afraid of the shiny floor or why the dog is afraid of a bottle. I'm, my first reaction is, how do his human react to the situation? Because often we don't realize how we encourage this uh, insecurity. And, and so that's the part that uh, uh, is more important for me, you know. So I will ask you, uh, what's her name? Angela, Angela Lee. To, uh, Angela, the, um, I will actually suggest to you that don't focus so much on how the dog is reacting, focus on how you're reacting. And, and so that's actually an easier way to help a dog. Because if, you know, if you watch the show, you want to see them, people they call me, they are fearful, they are stressed out, they are angry, they're frustrated, they're in denial, they're insecure, they're angry, they're fighting with each other. And so, and then I come into the picture and I am calm and I am confident and the dog changes, right? So that just shows you that it's not the dog who had the problem, it's how the human was trying to help the dog. So number one is human. Number two is the dog. Okay. Our next question is from October 9, OCT9 on Twitter, who asks, my dog is choosy ab food. Any advice? What is ab, A-B-T? Is it like a disease? Is it like a problem? Choosy about food. Oh, my dog is choosy about food. Well, that's a really simple one, uh, I think. Um, when a dog is hungry, right, when a human is hungry, we don't really say, well, I don't want to eat, uh, you know, this. We just eat anything. It, it really, anything that keeps us surviving. But when a dog has options, um, and, don't, and then the dog says, you know, I can just, I can just choose this or that or that, right? But, I mean, it's, it sounds simple. It, it is simple. If that's, that's, when, that's when exercise for a long period of time triggers hunger. So I guarantee you that any dog in the world, if you exercise him enough, his appetite will rise. And so as soon as he smells food, he's going to feel, he's going to feel uh, that he can actually have some of that. You know, just think about it. You know, people that go into, into a survival state, uh, people that we see it on TV sometimes, they get lost in the woods and they probably had, you know, great food in the past. You offer them anything, they will eat it. So that's the, that's the animal aspect that, um, you know, that's, that's one thing that we, we can always rely on. You know, and so I was, uh, that's why I always say he's animal, species, breed, name. Human, animal, species, race, name. But most of the time, when people introduce me their dogs, they do it backwards. They go the name, the breed, and then they say that's my baby or my son or my daughter. So that's, that's how they relate to the dog, right? So the order of connection is, is different. I'm not saying it's wrong, it's different. 
And if you connect that way, you're going to have a different outcome. So animal, species dog, breed, name. Nature has an order. And every time human changes that order, we create instability. Right? So that's why, let's uh, think about elephants or think about pandas, you know, nothing related to a dog. We try to, to give them as closest to their habitats with the less human interaction so they can live happy, right? So if a dog, oops, oh, so if a dog, if a dog has um, the same treatment, we will, we will achieve the same outcome, which is balance. Everybody can actually go after balance, right? Harmony. But when we don't take in consideration how nature actually is programmed, we're going to alter it. Um, and that's why I have a TV show, because people alter their relationship with their dogs. Another one? It's hot in here. Hmm. Our next question is from Serene Ton, who says, Hi, Caesar. I have a loving and sweet three-year-old female miniature schnauzer who is very close to my husband and I. She's very team timid and have always been since we... Oops, that's a long one. Since we have her... Since we had her since she was six weeks... Oops, all... Every slight or sudden movement may she gets terrified. She's also very worried of strangers, strangers, and she tends to greet strangers with growling and fierce barking that is hard to stop. Even at the neighbors who she has seen many times, wow, <laughs> uh, and whose home she's been to before. She's also barks at my sister and husband who she's once every two, my sister and husband, oh, oh her sister and husband who she sees once every two weeks. Well, I mean, that's, it, it goes and on and on and on. I mean, there's a long one. So I didn't read the whole thing, but so the pattern, right? So the dog loves the dog. There's two things in a conversation when people come to me. Is the story and it's the reality. The dog tells you the reality. The human tells you the story, right? What they think um, happens or what they think is right or wrong or how they think it happened. But this is a good example of, of uh, a, um, a couple knowing because the way they write the letter, right? I'm just basing my information uh, from what they wrote. So how it sounds to me without hurting anybody's feeling is the dog is insecure and, all, and often without us knowing, I'm talking about the owners, we nurture that unconsciously. I, I, I know that nobody who loves dogs try to hurt the dog. I know that for a fact, right? But um, so what we need to do is we need to understand that when a dog is timid, if we feel bad, if we feel sorry, we're not going to help, which is, is, is uh, something that I, again, cover in the seminar. I, I cover um, insecurity, aggression, uh, excitement, all the side effects. How do we affect them or how can we help them? So I think you would uh, totally uh, will get the whole picture if you come to the, uh, to the seminar. I don't know if it's tickets are uh, available, but uh, it's the concept of understanding why not to nurture instability um, is so important uh, because often we don't realize how we unconsciously uh, block their state of mind from growing or becoming balanced. So number one, we have a dog that is insecure and, and you know, and, and, and often when a human nurtures that, the dog becomes the one who controls the relationship. So it becomes an insecure dominant one. And that's what I got out of this letter. So hopefully uh, 
I can begin some uh, triggering the awareness that it need to happen in order for, for you to understand what, what you need to do. First, you need to uh, become aware of, do I'm giving affection when my dog is insecure? That, that, is, that is really detrimental to a dog, you know? Giving affection to a dog at the right time is the, is the, is the best thing we can learn, you know, because that's what we want. We want them to enjoy, we want them to benefit with the love we give them. And so often my clients, uh, my, actually my, the, my most wealthy clients make their dogs aggressive just by giving them affection. So remember, I say exercise, discipline, affection. Well, my wealthy clients, they don't, for the most part, the only thing they do is affection, affection, affection. And in their mind, they are being super nice. But in the dog mind, the dog is getting affection at the wrong time. So we can actually nurture or create instability just with affection. It's like, in my opinion, just like uh, only giving a, a child affection, 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 and no exercise and discipline. It, it's not, it's not going to uh, be able to, to deal with the world the, um, in a reality world. So it becomes spoiled, you know, to become... Uh, I'm just giving you as an example of what affection does. I'm not saying this. this I'm not saying the, uh, the serene tone is doing that. You know. What more? All right. So, our last question from Twitter is uh, purple orange, 1987. Who would like to know? Hi, how can I prevent my dog from barking against small kids approximately three or six years old? <clears throat> well, um, my, my uh, question would be, is, is your, your dog on the leash or off the leash? Number one. So let's say your dog is off the leash. Uh, my first thing is let's put him on the leash so he doesn't have ab ab access or option to move back and forth or sideways. So that way you stop movement and it's easier to control a dog that is, you know, without movement. And if a dog is on the leash, and then my, my next question will be where the dog is when the, where, when the kids are present, it's in front of you, next to you, or behind. Well, 99% of the time, the dog is in front of the human. 1% um, of the time, the dog is behind the human, but growling or barking. Obviously, it's easier to control the one that's behind the human than it is the one that's in front. So if a dog is in front of the human, the first step is not about the kids. It's about helping the dog to go next to the human. So, which again, something that we cover. I'm glad that you are actually um, asking me those questions. It makes me feel better that I can actually see that you guys will benefit or, or the, you know, our efforts to come into Singapore are, are, are going to be well received because are pretty common to what, to what, I'm, uh, what I deal here in the United States. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy. I'm, I'm very, um, uh, yeah, I'm very content that, uh, that you have the same problems <laughs> and that I can help. That's what I'm happy about. I'm not happy that you have problems. I'm just happy that you, that I can help. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, you're going to.